even during the bye week. When you're hot, you're hot. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you want to download your podcast, the show is free. The show always appreciates your support. Hey, now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers, you bet $5, you're going to get a three-week free trial of NFL Sony Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com and you can get started today. Just win, baby. Al Davis made that famous when he was uh, running the Raiders organization. Winning is doing wonders for USC's recruiting. They're hot. They're really hot right now. And they're only going to get better as they continue to win. USC got a commitment from big time, number one linebacker in the country, according to On3, Ty Jackson. Uh, my everydayers of this show already know that already. However, uh, USC still remains hot with the recruiting. You know, they've opened the season. They're 2-0. and And as of right now, the way they look, it doesn't look like they're going to be slowing down at all. We'll find out what happens in Michigan in a couple weeks. However, before that, USC got one of the top 2026 prospects uh, that USC was going after in the in this recruiting in that recruiting cycle, I should say. Utah defensive lineman. His name is Viliami Muala. I mentioned him briefly uh, on a previous episode this week. Muala, he was at the um, USC versus LSU game in Las Vegas, and he was in LA for the victory against Utah State. I should say the shutout. Um, and he got really excited about that. And he made his commitment to the Trojans Tuesday morning. So, yeah. Like I said, USC's hot. And when young men who actually thought about going to, to USC since they were a kid, uh, which Viliami is one of those, once he had that offer and once he saw, ooh, USC looks pretty good in defense. He said, first and foremost, I want to thank all the coaches that have recruited me uh, since my journey began. With that being said, I'm proud to say I'm a Trojan. My recruitment is shut down. End quote. Right. Look, I hope he sticks and I have zero reason uh, to doubt him. <laughs> but look, the way college football recruiting works nowadays, all I'm going to say is, Viliami, I'll see you in two years. Look, nevertheless, look, I, I, a little bit of sarcasm there. Uh, I have, I guess, zero reason to doubt the young man, but that's all. That's an eternity <laughs> in college football recruiting years. I, I do want to say this, though. Just having Moala make the commitment and say he's shutting it down, it shows serious interest, right? It's sending a message uh, that other recruits out there across the country are going to take notice of. It, there are no negatives to this. Uh, it's a plus plus positive across the board, right? I mean, you want those big dudes in the trenches committing. You don't want them saying, ah, oh, you were second place. USC has felt that kind of pain before. Viliami, he's six foot two. He's 305 pounds already. He's in his junior year at Bingham High School in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's a big time program. He also has offers from Utah and BYU and Oregon and Miami and Arizona State, Arkansas, UCLA, Tennessee. He wants to go to USA. He's got that connection already. So look, USA, just keep that line of communication open. That's that's basically the process between now and <laughs> obviously signing day. Um, if you can get them on campus as frequently as possible, and that's going to be Coach Dog's job. Coach Aaron, I, I'm a gosh, I don't pronounce that correctly. I apologize, oh, man. He told me, I said, man, we ain't losing anyone from the state of Utah as long as I'm here. He's part of the uh, 
I, I, when when students when recruits come on campus, he's one of those guys who who relates really well, and particularly with the Polynesian community. So, yeah, he's feeling really confident about this one. He's feeling confident about another recruit as well. Now, as far as Moala, he's joining USC has the number six ranked class in the class of twenty twenty six. To go over it real quickly, there's a um, you've got pledges from Moala. You have cornerback uh, Madden Reardon, local local product. You have four star cornerback Brandon Lockhart. You've got four star edge Xavier Griffin. Four star wide receiver uh, Jamiron Baker and three star athlete uh, Joshua Holland. Now I mentioned the state of Utah, Coach Dog. Remember when I told you about Jerome Miles just the other day? Just the other day. That's why you got to make sure you're watching this episode. Make make sure you're watching Locked On USC every single day of the week. If you're watching on YouTube, it's really easy so you don't miss an episode. Click that bell notification button. Become a subscriber. Smash that thumbs up. All this really means a lot to the show. But Jerome Miles, he is uh, considered the 42nd best prospect overall in the entire country, according to On3. And in their rankings, he's the number eight wide receiver in the 2025 cycle. Just a reminder for everybody. Six foot three, 215 pounds. He runs at 10, 300 meters. That is in the fast, fast category. He's big and fast. Unique combination. Unicorn type of wide receiver. And he's already playing against the best competition in the country. Last weekend, or two weeks ago, was it now? He went up against uh, IMG Academy. All he did was put up 125 yards, three touchdowns. Okay. He plays for Corner Canyon High School. Corner Canyon, uh, Jackson Dart, quarterback at Mississippi right now. Corner Canyon puts out talent. Jerome is one of their next. He was really, really impressed with what he saw uh, through USC's first two games. Prior to that, uh, everyone had him trending, leaning towards Utah. So he was at, he came out for his official visit for the Utah State game. He watched USC leave with a 40 to nothing victory. And now he's on commitment watch. And I told you the other day that you're not going to have to wait until October 30th, which was his original com- date of commitment. He said he's going to make his school choice on October 30th. He was choosing between Georgia and Texas A&M, Utah, USC, and one other off the top of my head. Uh, doesn't matter. It's pretty much narrowed down between USC, Texas A&M, and Utah. It's really a USC-Utah battle. It's really not a battle. But we're going to find out on September 18th. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's in a week. You do not have to wait until Halloween week. <laughs> Um, he has, like I said, all the insiders have uh, have him landing in USC, landing in LA. He'll be a Trojan. Coach, like I guess it. Coach Aaron Amamaa said today at practice, "You getting?" I, I asked him. I said, "You get him?" He says, "You know it." So when Coach Dog says, "You know it," take it to the bank. I'll, I'll say this: it, this would be huge. You're, you're bringing in one of the top wide receivers in the country. And this is after you've been spurned by Dalen McCutcheon. Where you at? You still committed to Florida State? You're sure? Who's their quarterback? Uh, what about you, Andrew Marsh? Five-star wide receiver who's committed to Michigan. Have you been looking to see who's going to be throwing you the ball in Ann Arbor? Just curious. I want everybody to be 100% sure of their school choice. I'm looking out for the both of you. I think you've got a little bit more assurance at USC as far as quarterback play, wide receiver development. Just saying. I have a really good idea what game Andrew Marsh is going to be watching really closely next week when USC travels to play Michigan. A lot of recruits are going to be watching that game. This is one of those move the needle type of games for recruits. They've already saw what USC did in that fist fight against LSU. 
I'm like, all right, we'll stick around for round two. Round two, USC landed a knockout blow to Utah State, 48 to nothing. So while a win will be great, a close loss, it's not optimal, but it's also not bad. However, what it really comes down to for the recruits is how does USC look in that game when they travel to Michigan? Obviously, a win's going to look great, regardless. But a loss, how did you look? How did you look at a loss if that should happen? And if you win, you win big. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Let me put it to you this way. If USC plays the way they did against LSU in Ann Arbor, they're going to be three and up. And more recruits are going to start doing that. If you if you're on Twitter, social media, whatever, you know that meme where you have the boyfriend and the girlfriend walking hand in hand, and all of a sudden the boyfriend's looking over his shoulder at the hot chick. You know the meme I'm talking about, right? Yeah, USC starting to look hot again, and the recruits are starting to look again, and all of a sudden, those those college football programs, those those coaches who think they have some recruits in the bag. They're starting to look over there. You know, they're like, hey, what are you looking at? I'm over here. Like I said, if USC leaves Ann Arbor with a win, the hot chick is back in town. That's all USC needs. They have all the natural resources. They have the location. They have the they have plenty of NIL to have to, to take care of everybody. But when they're winning. Yeah, that's bad news for the rest of the country. And here's some more bad news for the rest of the country. Everybody's allowed to pay people now. <laughs> it can't get USC in trouble. I can't conceive of them doing anything where you're going to say, uh, go check out USC, they're doing something wrong. Can't do that anymore. Do you like to eat well, but not if you're like me, you don't you probably don't want to clean up afterwards? Check this out. Fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness, uh, meet you can meet your wellness goals thanks to their chef crafted. Um, and you have different options. You have calorie smart, you can get protein plus. If you're into keto, they got that for you as well on their menu. Again, these are chef curated. And all you got to do is go. Head on over to Factors Fresh. They're never frozen meals. Uh, they're dietitian approved, and they're ready to eat in two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, all you have to all you have to do is enjoy the meal. They're great tasting. There's nothing. There's nothing to it. Make the day. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. Stop procrastinating. Start today. They've got like 35 different meals. Uh, they have 60 different add-ons you can choose from every week. I mean. You'll never get your taste buds won't get bored. That's what I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you deserve yourself. You deserve to treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon. You like shrimp? You like blackened salmon? Factors Meals has it. And you also deserve to keep the kitchen time to a minimum. Factor Meals are ready in two minutes. Head on over to factormeals.com forward slash locked on college fifty. The number five zero. And use code Locked On College fifty to get fifty percent off your first box, plus twenty percent off your next month. That's code Locked On College fifty at FactorMeals.com forward slash Locked On College fifty to get fifty percent off your first box, plus twenty percent off your next month while your subscription is active. You've heard me talk about FanDuel. Talk about it a lot over here. America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers, check this out. Bet $5, you're going to get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Uh, 
I mentioned in the first segment, USC travels to play Michigan. Uh, USC, you know, USC fans, you get to focus on the fact that the Trojans are 11-0. Excuse me. They're, ele- they're ranked 11th in the country. They're 2-0. <laughs> and their next opponent is the national, the reigning national champion. Yeah. The Michigan Wolverines. You also get to kind of focus on the fact that USC is the underdog going into the game. I'm going to ask you why they're the underdog in the next segment. But until the, the betters change their mind, USC is considered the underdog. USC's win over LSU, again, It they passed a really big, important test. Huge test. Uh, it, was an, it was like, it was an eye test. Everyone was focused on USC's defense. Were they going to be able to, to be stout enough to stop LSU's offense? Well, they did. <laughs> but the other side of it was not just USC's defense. Is USC prepared to play a big conference schedule? They passed both of those tests, not just again against LSU. They followed it up. They were focused at home against a lesser opponent. Shut out win, 48 to nothing, Utah State, right? Hindsight's 2020. <laughs> I mean, even, even the visually impaired, they they saw what happened. Not only did USC win that fist fight against LSU, uh, they they actually looked like they might be one of the best teams. In the big conference. I mean, top three for sure, right? We'll talk about that on another show. But for right now, early part of the season, USC looks like they're going to be just fine in the Big Ten. The big conference. All 18 teams. What was impressive about that win at home against Utah State, it's not so much the win. I mean, yeah, you loved everything about that but it's that they stayed focused. They didn't have a letdown. That was really their test. Or were they going to rest on their laurels and and continue to enjoy that win in Las Vegas? Or are they going to, you know, remain focused, task at hand, continue to try and get better? They chose the latter. They didn't follow the path of Notre Dame, who the week before went down to College Station. Big win. Anytime you win on the road, big win. But you can't go home and lose to Northern Illinois. You can't be Iowa. You can't lose to Iowa State. Right, Kirk Friends? Even the local media is starting to say maybe the game has passed them by. Anyways, so USC maintained their focus, and that's what they should be using the bye week for, maintaining their focus for that game against Michigan in a little over a week now. So if you were to go down the different position groups, um, I'm going to sprint through these uh, because there's a lot to go over. But, you know, with the running backs, what's rule? What's the one thing you want them to focus on? The younger guys, Woody Marks, what he needs to focus on, USC snap count. He has two false starts. He's done everything else almost perfectly, right? Ball security. Every down back, he can run between tackles, break tackles, catch the ball. He's been really good pass protection. So that's what he needs to work on. The younger guys, you know, Quentin Joyner, Amari and Peterson, Brian Jackson. You know, if if rule one is always going to be ball security, rule number two, probably one B, is this when you're a young running back. If you want to be, if you want to play, you want to be part of the rotation. Do what Travis Dye said. Do what Travis Dye does. No blocky, no rocky. You got to do it. Got to pass protect. Got to block. It might not be sexy, but you know what it, (laughs) I'll tell you what is, what's fun to watch. When you're standing up a bigger defender from reaching your quarterback, it's a productive play. Coaches like that. Your quarterback likes it. Your teammates love it. The wide receivers, tight ends. I got a little bit of heat from some of my viewers and listeners. Like, you know, they thought I was throwing the wide receivers under the bus a little bit. No, just pointing out a few plays where, you know, they were underperforming. They weren't meeting the standard. And they'll be the first to admit it. So, you know, instead of trying to focus on 
those great one hand catches, they need to refocus and concentrate on seeing the ball to completion, make the easy catch, as well as let's work on our blocking on the outside. If Coach Riley is going to continue to call that that wide receiver screen, those guys on the perimeter, they got to get better with their blocking. And it's not just the the underclassmen that I'm that I'm talking about. Lake McCree, the tight end, you know, he's worked way too hard during the offseason, rehabbing, making sure he was ready for the season. Can't lose that focus when you're about to score a touchdown and not realize there's defenders going to be chasing you, trying to knock the ball out from behind. Ball security. So again, wide receivers, a little bit more focus in the red zone. That was, a, I guess, a little bit of a, a hiccup for USC in the first game, not so much in the second game. Uh, again, did have those two drop touchdowns. So they scored on one of them. Get yeah, got to look for something to, for the co- the coaches have to find something to say, hey, look, guys, you're too good to, to let that happen. Don't let that happen anymore. As far as the quarterback play, Miller Moss, um, you know, he talked about it himself. He's got some stuff to clean up. He's had some luck. He almost had a ball intercepted. He had a free play where he did throw an interception. That was called back. Uh, he had those two deep throws to Makai Lemon where he, he kind of noodle armed it out there. Passes were complete, but they got to be better. They got to be better. Got to take advantage of those opportunities. And again, balls are going to get knocked down at the line of scrimmage, but it can't let that become too habitual. Uh, again, one of those almost turned into an INT. Offensive line, you know, going into the season, that was they they were considered the weakest link of the off of the on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think they are anymore. Again, the concern there is with the numbers. And not really numbers. They got plenty of guys. It's experienced numbers. Gino Quinones is back. He's healthy. Good. <laughs> Killian O'Connor. He's down for the next month and a half. Maybe longer. We'll see. Hopefully not. So those guys really, as far as the coaching staff, they need to focus on who are going to be the guys backing up the starting five. You know, against Utah State, they gave up zero sacks, only two tackles for loss. That's really good. And think about how many, all 11 offensive linemen played in that game. So. Late in the game, when you're seeing a bunch of rotation, they're they're doing their job. Excuse me, I need to drink a water in there. Now, the other thing is they've been really good. They've been focused on. So far, the offensive line, they've been really good in the penalty department. They've only had two illegal procedure penalties. Just two. Uh, for comparison's sake. Will Campbell had two by himself against USC. Against Utah State, the offensive line was clean in the penalty department, except for Jonah Monheim's illegal hands to the face penalty, and that was early in the game. Stuff like that happens. You know, you get your hand on the guy's shoulder. It's it's sweaty. It slips. Gets in, it gets up there. That happens. That's why you always see guys grabbing the jersey. <laughs> Jonah, grab the jersey. What happened next time? Uh, defensive line, I, I think the focus is get to the quarterback. Everyone's been pleasantly surprised with the interior work. Um, Gavin Meyer just keeps getting kudos from everybody. Talk to him after practice on Wednesday. But right now, the defensive line is credited with half a sack. And Devin Tompkins has that half a sack. He paired up with, was it, Achille Arnold. Uh, to make that happen against Utah State. So again, the focus during the bye week for the defensive line, get pressure on the quarterback. Start finishing those plays. You're doing great, but you got to get there now. And Michigan, that'll be it'll be an interesting test. That's not the same Michigan offensive line from last year. And we know their quarterback, they have big time issues. If I'm I'm thinking you stop the run, make them beat you with the pass. We'll see. We'll see uh, what the focus is and how it shows up on that in that game in Ann Arbor. Talk about the linebackers all the time. 
so far, you got Easton Mascarino, Arnold, Mason Cobb, Eric Gentry. They've been getting the bulk of the the bulk of playing time. But Mason Cobb was dinged up. Eric Gentry's been dinged up it a little bit. They'll both be ready for the game against Michigan. But the focus this bye week is if they need to go in, if they need to go deeper into the rotation, who are going to be those guys? As far as the safeties, it, you know, what this is really interesting. <laughs> um, Achille Arnold has never given up an interception. He's the only guy who's given up an, <laughs> excuse me, a touchdown in his career in college. He gave up the first one. Kamari Ramsey gave up the other passing touchdown. Those guys have done a yeoman's job filling in since they've come over uh, to play safety for USC. But I did want to point out that, you know, USC's given up two passing touchdowns and it's come at the expense of both of those guys. So uh, the focus this week, just continue the communication process with the team and get keeping that getting better. Uh, Coach Dan Lynn explained why he likes his safeties to use the, the uh, communication device on the field. That's what they're focused on this week, continuing that communication process to get better, keeping the players in the right position to be successful. It shows up with their physicality, with their tackling. And then as far as the cornerbacks, look, they've been giving up yards between the 20s, and they really didn't give up a lot of yards against Utah State, but against LSU they did. But they haven't allowed a touchdown yet. And you got to really like what you're seeing from Jalen Smith and Jacoby Covington as your starters. Jalen didn't play in the last game. He'll be ready for Michigan. But the focus this week for those guys, if Coach Belk and Coach Lynn want to rotate eight to ten guys in, this bye week competition, I think it's going to determine if they're going to be able to do that. I don't know. So again, that's a big ask. We'll see. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview, right? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team, and they're going to do it faster, and they're going to do it for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of over a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It, and hiring is really easy when you have that many quality candidates. And it's so easy you'll have that 86% of small businesses, they're going to have a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, it's quick, and it's easy. It's In fact, they even launched this new feature called uh, that's going to help you write your own job descriptions. It's going to make the process quicker and easier. Post your job for free at LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, before we uh, get out of here for this episode, um, one of my everyday viewers on YouTube, his name is Alan Maddox. He asked me a question. And it was right after the recent AP poll was released. He said, Alex wanted me to, to do this on YouTube. Salute to you, Mark. Can you talk about the subject I'm about to put here in a segment on one of your upcoming shows? I'm interested in your opinion on the rankings subject. Here's It was a very long question. I've narrowed it down. <laughs> uh, this is Alan's thoughts. USC is being totally disrespected in the AP and coaches poll at number 11. They should be sitting well ahead of Oregon, Michigan, and Penn State. All three of those teams don't look very solid at all right now. Plus, USC has, a, has better wins than any of them. Now, just to remind everybody, I'm going to go over the top 11 teams since that's, USC is number 11 in the AP poll. Georgia's number one. Texas is number two. George, excuse me. Georgia one. Texas two. Ohio State three. Alabama four. Ole Miss five. Missouri six. Tennessee seven. Penn State at 8, Oregon at number 9, Miami at number 10, your USC Trojans number 11. Okay. I'm totally cool with the top three in that order. Georgia, Texas, Ohio State. No problem. But, dear Lord, please. <laughs> Six of the top 10 teams from the SEC. Come on. AP Poters. Explain yourself. 
please. Let's start with number six, Missouri. I get it. They haven't been scored upon yet. Good defense. But they played Buffalo and Murray State before them. You want to talk about Ole Miss? Okay. Lane Kiffin, they got a high-octane offense. Jackson Dart is probably one of the top leading contenders for the Heisman Trophy Award this, this season. They scored 52 and 70 points respectively against Middle Tennessee State University, and they opened the air against Furman. So they look good, but who have they played? Explain yourself, AP voters. Why? Why do you have them this high? Because of how many points they've scored? Have you considered the competition? Tennessee did win at North Carolina State. Solid win on the road, ACC. But they played Chattanooga the week before. Chattanooga. I'm not going to die arguing this one. You want to leave Tennessee at seven, fine. Win on the road. Give it to them. Penn State at number eight. Miami at number nine. I'll live with it. But let me remind everybody, let me remind the AP voters, Penn State needed a huge, big-time wake-up call in the second half. They almost lost to Bowling Green. They almost went the way of Notre Dame and Iowa. Again, I need every single AP voter who votes. You need to give an explanation of why you're voting somebody where you're voting. At least the top 10. If you want to do some extra credit and go all the way down the list, more power to you. But let's start with the top 10. Explain to me why Oregon is still in the top 10 ahead of USC. You can't. It's impossible. Explain why the state of Idaho can gang up and curb stomp the Ducks and you're going to keep the Oregon ahead of USC? It's okay to admit you misjudged the team. AP poll, if you want to keep some credibility, don't be like the coach's poll. Don't don't act like you have some SID's assistant sending in the vote every week. Because that's kind of what this, this week's top 10 looks like. Tell me why you have Oregon ahead of USC. USC has the better win on Technically on the road, it was a neutral site game. Oregon's played both of their games at home. USC beat LSU, who at the time was considered the number 13 team in the country. They're still top 20. Explain to me why USC's shutout out win at home did not impress you, but Oregon's Come from behind wins at home against Idaho and Boise State. Make your toes curl. I understand you've been dropping them, but why are they ahead of USC? There you go, Alan. Answered your question. Hopefully someone from the AP will answer my questions. I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. My Friday rant will be included in that one. I'm going to be talking about one of USC's newest capitalist ventures. It has something to do with NIL marketing. I'm not sure about this one. All right. Don't forget, when you're done making Locked On USC your first listen every single day, don't forget about Locked On College Football. They got you covered across the board. And get on over there to wrc.com. Lots of recruiting information. Lots of written content about the team. Got you covered all the way. So until that next episode, everyone, you know what to do.